Good morning, Alistair Water here at Politics Done Right. Uh, anyway, you can get a brick by uh, donating $25 per month. You'd get a four by eight brick on, our, on, our, on the pathway to the studio, part of our building. Our $50 a month, it's a, uh, it's a eight by eight brick. I think you would love it. Uh, you can check it out. Actually, I'm going to put that brick on the screen right now. If you take a look at your screen, you see what, if for those of you watching it on video, you see what the brick looks like. Please consider doing that. Good morning, Howard and Jack Van Beber in the studio. How are you guys doing this morning? Oh, I am upright, Egberto. As I was talking to you earlier, I didn't sleep really well last night. I'm trying to uh, figure out a difficulty that I've got here. And um, well, it just was keeping me awake. Well, you know, I, I, I know I know that feeling, but you know, when when it's being uh, done by Howard, you know that in the long run it gets done. So what can I say? Eventually, you have, I eventually stumble upon the right thing to do. And sometimes it's just sheer luck that well, happens. Okay, well, let's try this can over here and see if this string will work with it. That's basically you, what I'm doing. You know, uh, Howard, I'm going to tell you something, and I don't want to sound like a pooper here, but I don't completely believe in luck. I just think you know your, and I can't use the words on air, but you know your, you know what. You know, your, your stuff, you know, that, that, yeah. that's the word you're looking for. You know, your stuff, you know, your stuff. That's what I'm looking if for. Yes. Not on air, it would be a different word, but it you know, be, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, well, yeah, I do. And I don't. And sometimes it's like, well, okay, let's try this combination here and see. But yes. uh, the thing is, is you don't give up because the right combination may be the next one that you try. Right. I, l I so, love that word. You never, ever give up. You never, mm. ever, ever give up. You know, no. I mean, I, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes that's a dangerous phrase, but that's, that's how I live my life. You never, ever give up. Even in what we're doing, you never give up. Welcome. Good morning, Eric Hayes. Good morning, Eric Hayes. Um, anyhow, um, so I, I trust all is good. How is Mr. Van Beber doing back in, in, in the house? Is he just fine? I trust. Yeah, we're doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, good morning, citizens. Uh, you know, we need some some fresh people to call in on this show. Uh, we can't do all the talking. So, uh, well, you can. Good luck. I guess we could. <laughs> Choose hey Van Van Beber, I don't know what what he's uh, he's meaning when he said you can do all the talking, man. I guess he's saying that you have so much back there cooped up, you're ready to go. Anyway, folks, let's get to say. Go ahead. I said he has a lot to say. Oh, okay, great. Well, you know what? Let me just get a, a primer here and say, folks, please remember call 713-526-5738 and uh hit number one to contribute to the program. We are behind. And you know what, Howard? I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if I can tease people into giving. Today is my birthday. So if you want, if you it say, I, I, yes. And that's, so, man. That's, that's, that's super. And so I'm saying, you folks. Everyone. Yeah. For my birthday, give me a call. 713. And by the way, it's not coming to me. It's going to the station. Okay. So don't think you're, oh, like Berta's trying to move off of you. No, it's going to the station. 713-526-5738. Extension number one to contribute extension number two to speak on air and also remember you can go to kpft.org hit the donate button so howard what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with that interview i did with these these activists here in houston and they you know there for those of you who know houston uh, houston has open ditches for a lot of drainage in many communities and it also has, you know, uh, a lot of work that's going on because it's a flood prone area. Last disasters have proven to be disastrous here. And uh, so what's going on is the monies are not being dis redistributed equitably, uh, even for people who are paying the, the new drainage taxes, et cetera. We also find that most of the drain, the open drains are in BIPOC communities. All of the new uh, converted culverts, et cetera, are, are in, in not. So uh, these these uh, these two women uh, as a part of a group that I think has grown to seventy five folks in Northeast uh, Houston, they decided they're going to make a change and they are really tackling 
city council as they are creating their budgets right now. So let's listen to them and then we will take it on the other side. And Alistair, thank you for those uh, birthday wishes, my sister. Okay, let's go ahead and play that right now. Welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Today, I am honored to have Doris Brown and Alice Liu, two environmental and community activists and advocates with the Northeast Action Collective. So let's get started with what is the Northeast Action uh, Collective, Doris? The Northeast Action Collective is a bilingual BIPOC community. Um, we got together because we were frustrated. It was only 10 of us that began it back in uh, 2018. We were frustrated with the bureaucracies, with the governesses, because we were still flooded his- historically. So we got together. And like I said, it was 10 of us then. It's almost five years later, because in October we'll be five years old. And we have over 75 regular members. We have a lot of collaborators now. So, yes. And we, we're never going to give up our fight for better, for equity and for better structure. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Alice, um, let me let me first just tell you in, in uh, that I am impressed that in a organization like this, we have young people, the older folks and so forth getting involved. What got you involved? in this project? Yeah, so I've been with um, West Street Recovery and the Northeast Action Collective for uh, almost three years now. And um, I first became involved with climate activism and organizing in college. And um, I have, I had known about West Street Recovery since Hurricane Harvey. I was aware of their efforts to help folks rebuild um, after Hurricane Harvey, especially people who were denied from government and other forms of assistance. So I was really inspired by um, their model for community organizing. And I think you're right that one of the most beautiful parts is uh, how intergenerational we are. I'm I'm 24. I think, Doris, how old are you? 73. Oh, <laughs> so you're so you're getting the two ends of the of the age spectrum right here. <laughs> and I I think I think that is wonderful. So, uh, Doris, tell me exactly. I mean, er, earlier before we got on on air, we're talking about uh, that your your concern was about the infrastructure, specifically how it's neglected in BIPOC areas. As an example, from the document that. Uh, you sent over, I learned something. I didn't realize that 41% or so of our drainage are open ditches, but 80 something percent of said ditches occur in BIPOC areas. In other words, in, in communities of color, which I think right on the bat tells you something about how infrastructure dollars are actually allocated in this in, in this city. And likely this is representative around the, the entire country. Talk to me, Doris. Yes, I um that's because we've been ma- marginalized. We've been redlined. We now live in congested areas that uh, have refineries. And I, I, I'm going to say this. We feel as though we're sacrifice zones because everything that uh, we cut off our of, um, our lifespan, because of the uh, hazards and the climate change and different things like this, we lose 24 years of our lifespan, especially with this particular matter. And um, the fact that in the five mile radius of my home, I have five cement batches. We have refineries. We have the largest landfill in the world. At night, they burn, and we have methane gas permeating our air. So we have children that are born with asthma that shouldn't be. I don't know. We have historically just been disinvested, even even with us paying drainage fee and everything. We still don't get the upkeep and other maintenance that other areas get so so that is the reason uh that that you guys formed this group claim uh, with the expectation that 
together going to our city council or other governmental agencies, you will be able to uh, to at least get notice. Have you been getting any media attention, let's say, from the major networks in the area, ABC, CBS, NBC, et cetera? Yes, you, we have. And Channel 26 also, because they are paying attention. We are presenting something, some data and stuff. So we're not only saying this, but we are presenting data. We do research on what we um, go to City Hall and to the county. We'll be in our way to the state trying to get some equity. And it does, just does not make any sense that we pay our taxes. We pay our drainage fees. We pay all kinds of taxes and we still cannot get no relief out here in the Northeast and the Southeast. I mean, it's happening all over to all BIPOC neighborhoods. And it's time for a change. You know, I mean, this has been going on 50, 60 years. How can we, we never seem to recover from a disaster like everyone else before we can recover it's another one. So it's just compounding on it. It's cascading. Now, you you mentioned something that really hit me earlier when you said you feel like we are being sacrificed. And you spent, you know, a lot of people have a tendency to uh, say things like, well, the reason why certain areas don't get the infrastructure that other areas get is maybe the tax base is smaller there. And as opposed to allocating taxes the way it should, meaning in a in a in in an area as opposed to well if this is a rich area we give a whole lot of a location to that a rich area a lot of times that's not done now Alice how um how are you approaching let's say city council uh from a de- from a demand point of view what are you demanding of of city council do you have a list of items that you want them to actually effect now Um, Yes, absolutely. So uh, over the past few months, we have gotten together with not just the Northeast Action Collective, but with other community groups and allies across Northeast Houston and across the city. And we've put together four demands that we think address um, a lot of the inequities in our drainage infrastructure system that Doris was talking about. So our demands are to increase the SWAT uh, and local drainage program um, project funds by $20 million and to make those increases permanent. And this is actually uh, uh, more than doubling the funds for those two pots of money. Um, and we've chosen to focus on these two pots of money because uh, SWAT allows city councilors to actually um, implement meant projects that directly address their constituents' needs. Um, and we're focusing on the local drainage project because- What is what? Um, yes, SWAT is the stormwater action team. So Got that it. is a pot of money that is equally divided between city council districts. Um, so we're asking them not only to increase SWAT, but also to increase the local drainage project because we know that need is not evenly divided between city council districts. So local drainage project allows public works to actually address areas with the most need uh, and areas with the highest social vulnerability. Um, our other demands are actually to increase funding for public works staff and maintenance. Um, That way, we're increasing their in-house capacity to address ditch maintenance needs. And finally, we're asking them to make um, drainage governance more uh, equitable and democratic. Now, when you say equitable and democratic, earlier I I went on a short soapbox where I stated that it seems like uh, wealthier areas get better, let's say, drainage, et cetera. Um, is that what, do you all have that documented that uh, they actually put more money for drainage in these areas and let's say in BIPOC communities? Is that something that's documented? And uh, Doris, do you know that or? Well, you can see it. So, I mean, the fact that we're still flooding out here and our drainage dollars are being diverted somewhere else. You can see it anywhere. And I think um, Alice did the research team. Did they come up with uh, some data on that from the four years? Well, Doris, I think you said it great. Um, When we're talking about these inequities, uh, we know that all levels of government 
basically are not spending their money to address the areas with the most need. Uh, after Hurricane Harvey, um, other uh, I, I forget the specific numbers, but um, Northeast Houston has only gotten less than five um, substantial flood mitigation projects, whereas other areas of Houston have gotten three to four times more. Um, this is something that we see playing out at the city level, at the county level. Um, in 2018, there was a $2.5 billion flood bond. We were the group that was fighting to make sure that equity was actually in that flood bond language. But even once we got the word equity in there, uh, several years later, we found that there was still a 75% shortfall in terms of funding for Halls and Greens Bayous, which are the bayous in our areas, whereas wealthier parts of Houston, their projects were almost 100% funded. Um, and at the state level, uh, we have had to file a Title VI because after Hurricane Harvey, there was $4 billion of federal flood mitigation money and the state gave zero dollars of that to the city of Houston. And we have successfully filed a Title VI that um, the HUD uh, is now trying to move to litigation to actually try to redistribute those dollars. So I think it's a great question of how at all levels of government these inequities are stacking up. But I think at the end of the day, Dora said it best, which is we know these inequities exist because... Uh, when we look at the infrastructure itself and we look at the actual conditions of drainage um, and we listen to people who are living in Northeast Houston, we know that they are flooding at a much higher rate than folks in other parts of Houston. In other words, my eyes are not lying. I know what I see. I know what I see. Well, so let, let's go into, um, you gave some points that you, that, that you, you gave some ass or actually not ass. you gave some demands of what you want done, what the uh, North, North, I forgot the name, North Action. What is the name of the group? Uh, Just call us not the North Action. Oh, that Collect. is so, that is so much easier than, <laughs> than having to remember the, the long name, right? Uh, yeah. But I, 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 yeah, that now, NAC, what, what specifically now, now that you have these demands, where are you going to go from here? I mean, we are giving you coverage on KPFT and other places to make sure that people know this is occurring, hopefully people in your area as well. How do you want, or what do you want done, or what do you need done to ensure that uh, more pressure is applied to the particular politicians? Do you have actionable items that you want activists, activists, journalists, et cetera, to do? You can start, Doris, and then I, oh, go ahead, Lou. Go ahead, uh, Alice. I'll I'll start us off, and then and then uh, I'll pass it to you, Doris. But um, this so this interview is great timing because we are now in the middle of the uh, budget workshop process, and we are also in the middle of the period where city councilors can submit amendments to actually change the budget. Um, just yesterday, the mayor released his proposed budget. And um, we know that there has been some increase in funding in drainage investment for this ne next fiscal year. So we know that in some sense, uh, this we're better off in this budget than we were last year. But we're not exactly sure um, if that money is actually going towards the pots of money that we're asking them to go towards. Uh, over the next three weeks, the budget will be finalized and voted on in June 7th. Um, and what we're asking is if folks are interested in giving public comment at city council, um, please reach out to us. Uh, our phone number and email are on our website. And um, the best way to get in contact is through our Instagram, which our handle is just West Street Recovery. Um, next Tuesday on uh, May 23rd, we will also be having a press conference and um, rally at City Hall. Um, and if journalists are interested in covering that, that would be fantastic. Uh, please reach out to us. Uh, email alice at weststreetrecovery.org. Um, but I'll pass it to you, Doris. Doris, do you want to talk a little bit about um, earlier you mentioned the diversion of the drainage tax and why this is an issue that we care about? We care about it because 
we're not getting, we're steady putting into a system that is not putting back to us. Our money is being taken and building up the affluent areas of town. And this started back in 2015, some somewhere along there. So imagine the millions of dollars that could have been helping us, could have been helping the infrastructure and the drainage where we wouldn't flood. And over the years, it, it hasn't got better. It's only got worse. And we're, we're, we're trying to um, put an amendment on. We need policy change to stop this because when I look at it, that's it. That's fraud. Now, Doris, so let me ask you about that, right? You said that they're collecting taxes from your district, uh, and the drainage taxes in your district. And you're saying those taxes, those, that money that they're collecting is not re-inputted into your neighborhoods, but actually into neighborhoods on in other districts. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying, and that's happening all over Houston. Every year, the drainage and sewer tax goes up, but it just does not come back to the neighborhoods. Or it doesn't come back to BIPOC neighborhoods in a timely manner, nor equitable. It's, it's definitely not equitable. And I think they need some institutional accountability and some transparency because this is historical. I mean, this has been going on for years. It's, it's time for it to stop. Yeah. And, and what, the reason I'm asking it this way, right, is that there's nothing like documentation. And uh, my question is, can can your district document that? you are putting out more into that. And not that, I mean, that really shouldn't matter, right? We should go where the flood is, where it, wherever it's flooding should be mitigated. But since you are already putting in from a flood prone area, putting in a whole lot of your tax base for that, those drainage, with those drainage fees, et cetera, am I really understanding that you could probably document that you are not equitably getting back what your own neighborhood and maybe Alice, you have some numbers on that. Can you actually document that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, when we're talking about the diversion of the drainage tax, um, this is actually something that's uh, like not necessarily being diverted between districts, but the city is overall not spending um, the entire uh, pot of money that our drainage tax are funding. So the city is overall diverting money that is being paid for drainage and that is supposed to be being paid um, on drainage according to the vote of city of Houston residents. And they're spending about $22 million of a, a year of that money. And they're spending it um, on other city services instead. So Mayor Turner has said, hey, we can't actually stop diverting this money because what would happen to essential services um, like police, right? And uh, first of all, that is actively violating a city ordinance and that is actively violating um, the public will of Houston residents. But also um, we think that uh, those priorities, right? Prioritizing police over public infrastructure such as drainage, it is not actually reflecting um, the needs of the city of Houston. I think I don't think that could be put any uh, any better. I mean, that if, if you're collecting drainage fee and diverting it to police or otherwise, that is uh, I, I I think that should be legal. It's probably not, but I think it should be. Uh, and it, it, it is simply wrong. All right. Let me ask you, because our time is coming up here. Uh, please tell me, I'm going to start with you now, Alice, and then and end with um with Doris. Please tell me what should, what didn't I ask you that I needed to ask you? And let me know anything that you want to put out there that we need to get out there. And also remember to give us your website, et cetera. So it'll be in the blog as well, but give us your website so that people can hear it on air. Yeah, fantastic. I just want to end with... um. Uh, speaking a little bit about how difficult it has actually been um, for us to make any any difference at all within the budget process. So the NAC as a group has tried to engage with the city budget for three to four, three uh, three years now, and um, in the past when we've tried to engage, uh, we've been told, "Hey, 
you're showing up to the wrong workshop. Hey, this is not the right time to speak or, Hey, you're too late. And that ship has sailed already. So every year we've been, been getting a little bit better about showing up and being able to apply, apply pressure at the right time and in the right place. Um, but part of our ask is to make the city budget more democratic because we believe right now, uh, well, a city's budget should reflect its values and should reflect its priorities. And right now, it doesn't reflect the values of the people. Right now, it reflects the values of special interests. And when people who care deeply in our communities try to show up and we try to say, hey, um, drainage infrastructure and flood mitigation is a matter of public health, right? That's a matter of public safety. Uh, it's a matter of protecting lives, of uh, protecting homes, right? And protecting entire communities. When we show up and we say that message again and again, year after year, right? We've had over 40 people give public comment every single week at city council over the past two months. Um, and we don't know whether or not that's really going to make a change yet. We'll find out over the next three weeks. We'll find out by June 7th. Um, but I just wanted to end that infrastructure should be a site of democracy and it should be a site of public input. And it should be a place where people are able to express our needs and those needs are actually met. Um, so that's our hope for the budgeting process this year. And our website is uh, www.weststreetrecovery.org. Well, let me tell you, having you on board, Alice, with your passion and and uh, it's 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 very very important. And you all will get things done as you activate more people. No doubt about it. Doris, give me a closer. I, we never quit. We're not going to quit. Um, We've been fighting this fight and we're going to continue until we feel like we're no longer that sacrifice sign. We want equity. We want transparency. And we want to stop flooding. You know, I mean, there's only so many times that you can, you know, bounce back. So we're very resilient people out this way. We have to be in order to have some quality of life. And that's what it's all about, a different quality of life. Well, let me give a 30 second sermon and it goes this way. Earlier this week in one of my shows, somebody said, "We, uh, the government is gonna do what the government is gonna do. We have no control. That is not true. And you all, Northeast Action Collective, Doris Brown, Alice Liu, you guys disprove what that apathetic young man had to say. And for everybody that's listening to this program right now, I want you guys to stamp those two names in your brains. Two people that decided to go out there and said, nope, it's not about me believing in government. I am the government. We the people. Sometimes it takes a bit more to get things done, but we are going to get it done. Exactly. Alice Lou, Doris Brown, it has been my honor to have both of you on Politics Done Right. You guys represent exactly what being citizens is all about. Thank you so kindly for being on the program. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. All right, folks, I, I hope you like that and, 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 and feel empowered, the power that you already have. Please remember to give us a call at 713-526-5738. Again, that is 713-526-5738 and hit the option one to contribute to the program. Remember, we are in fun drive mode, but we're still making sure to give you substantive programming. But we do need to raise $250 in the, actually, we need to raise more than that to cover for the days that we didn't make core quota. 713-526-5738 extension number one to contribute extension number two to come on air and right now we have harry that's going to be coming on harry sorry about the wait we just had to get uh, that interview on air harry how are you doing today how are you doing this morning happy birthday brother Humberto willis muchisima gracias thank you and i I'm a long time listener. I've been listening to you since uh, you've been on the air uh, when you did Politics Done Right at uh, 12 o'clock. And I love the way you think. 
I just enjoy your progressive ideas. I like how you explain how government works. I like how you break down the tax system. I like how when you talk about Venezuela and the oil uh, and how the corporations try to uh, uh, they, they, they just do corporate greed as far as the oil system and, uh, uh, goes and, uh, and how, uh, we as regular Americans get screwed. And I love your arguments against guns, uh, when, because guns are out of control in this country and how you argue against the NRA. And I enjoy your arguments against, uh, people like Greg Abbott. People like Ron DeSantis and their conservative ideologies. I just love your progressive mindset, your progressive ideas. And I love some of your callers like Johnny and some of the other progressive callers that you have on the air. I also listen to Steve Hunter and I like some of the arguments and the talks you've had with him as well. I did call him a while back talking about uh, Donald Trump and um, how I disagree with a lot of his ideas. But you're just a wonderful human being, and I just I, I, and I understand. I did hear you once say that you go to church here in Houston. Uh, say that again, sir. The last sentence. <laughs> yeah, you go to church here in Houston, right? Uh, my my wife is a deacon at St. Luke's Missionary. Bat well, like so, it's now called the Luke. You know, everything is newfound, and I work with that pastor often. I'm not a I'm not I'm not a every Sunday church goer. But I, I love the pastor and work with him for all the good that he's doing in the community. Okay, I was just wondering, because I go to church in Houston. Uh, have you heard of the Fondren Church? No, what is it called? It's called Fondren. It's uh, 79. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, I have. Yes, yes. Yeah, I was wondering if you could come to that, the Seventh-day Adventist, if you could come to that one day. Um because a lot, you know, I, when I go there, I, I speak of you a lot when we talk about religion and we talk about uh, uh, politics and stuff with the pastor and that sort of thing. And, I, and you're one of the people I mentioned. I would love to do it. Actually, it's funny because I am I, I am scheduled for a speech at uh, uh, one of the Unitarian churches around here as well. So, yeah, I love doing that. So, you know, just drop me a line at KPFT at politicsunright.com and let's let's do it. OK. Okay, so I should just uh, yeah, just go on your website and because uh, you know where it is, it's seventy nine fifty, and it, and it's uh, every Saturday, it's every Sabbath, and Great. they do um, the school uh, from ten a.m. to like eleven thirty, and then they do the sermon from like eleven thirty to like two two o'clock. No problem. Drop me a line, my brother. Kpft at politicsdoneright dot com. So it's my the website just right. kpft at politicsdoneright dot com. I'll see it. Okay. All right, Harry. Look, hey, Harry, first of all, um, if, if I were a different hue, I would be blushing. So thank you so kindly for the kudos, my brother. You have a hey, wonderful rest of your day. I, I, I'm, I'm glad we share birthdays together. And I know, you know, tomorrow is Malcolm X's birthday. Yes, sir. So happy birthday, Harry. Happy birthday. Happy, happy. OK. Happy birthday. Back to you, Roberto. And I'll all right. Keep Peace, brother. Peace. Human being, brother. And what, Thank I you. Say, what, you know how you always talk about how you know how I am this baby. I am what? Out. I'd like <laughs> you to see, uh, when, you, when you start the show, I'd like you to start the show. You know how I start this baby. You you know how I do it. I am what? In. All right. You know what? I'm going to do that for you tomorrow. Okay. I got to remember, but I'm going to do it for you tomorrow. You take care, Harry. Thank you, brother. You have a great day. You too. And I'll call back when, we, when you have some more topics that I like that you talk about. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. Let's go to MC. Come on in, MC. Good morning. Good morning. I, I tuned into the program late. I do admire the background work that these women have done. I admire their interest in justice and the clarity of their speech. But a fact is, infrastructure alone cannot stop flooding in Houston. The engineers cannot do it because we were once a prairie. Most, most of Houston was once a prairie. And the slope from here to Galveston Bay is so little that water takes a long time to drain. Therefore, yeah, I think it's like 50 feet. 
um, in 50 miles, which is... Yes, amazing. it's a very which, slight slope. You're absolutely right, ma'am. But there are things that we can do to prevent most of the flooding in Houston. I live at the lowest house, lowest, no, the second lowest house in my little watershed. I have studied permaculture, P-E-R-M-A-C-U-L-T-U-R-E. Mm -hmm. On my typical suburban lot, I have uh, brought about three different ways that contribute to prevention of flooding. What I would like to do is to talk to these women. Um, I guess I will have to drive to them or they will have to drive to me, which would be preferable. And I would like to talk to them about ways that we, the citizens, without the input of millions of dollars from the city, can do a great deal towards stopping flooding in our neighborhoods. So what I'm hoping is that I may talk with somebody who manages your phone calls. I may give my telephone number to that person, and these two women can call and get that phone number from your show. MC, and let me let me interrupt. There's a quick way for us to, because that's, that's the whole purpose of our our type of programming, okay? We interact with our people. So I want to ask you uh, to, to drop me a line at kpft at politicsdoneright.com, kpft at politicsdoneright.com, and I would put both of you in connection with each other because I, have, I would then have all your information and say, hey, uh, MC wants to talk to you about it. And I think that is how community works, MC. I'm, I'm thankful for your call because... People helping people, people assisting each other. That's what we're talking about here. So thank you so kindly for that. Anything else that you want to add, my friend? Uh, thank you for helping to connect us. Goodbye. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, you have a wonderful rest of your day. Drop me a line and we'll connect you, okay? Let's go to Bargin or Bargin or how, if, forgive me if I said it wrong. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? How, what, what, how should I have said your name? Barden. Barden. Well, good morning, Barden. How are you doing this morning? Good. I want to just say about Doris and Alice. Actually, this last caller was exactly right. But Doris and Alice, I can guarantee, voted for Mayor Turner. And now you got what you deserve. You voted for him and now you're going to sit around and cry about it because he's not doing anything about it. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about Kingwood, the floods often. And I guarantee you're going to vote for Sheila Jackson Lee next and you're going to get what you deserve. And on top of that, you're hoping the city of Houston Parks Department or whoever is going to come out and rescue you they're not. I've watched them fix a little piece of sidewalk. There was nine city workers and nine city trucks. And by the way, they were all BIPOCs. They're 100% BIPOC. And they sit in their truck and they look at their phone all day long. Let me ask you, uh, Barden, you tell it. me, let's, let's get in between the lines here as to what you really mean um who should they who do you think they should have voted for that would have made a, a, a difference anybody but sylvester turner who is corrupt politician for the last 20 years mm -hmm. now i i think let, let me let me put let me ask you another question i'm sorry it's been the same way i'm sorry repeat I guarantee you that next they're going to vote for Sheila Jackson Lee, who is the same exact problem. Just like now, who Robert would you suggest? Now, not not that you are you you're telling us who we shouldn't vote for. Who would you suggest that uh, these people in Houston vote for in the next election? Uh, well, 
there's another Democrat. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be a Democrat. I'm, I'm just saying I, I, what, what I'm trying to get from you, uh, my friend, is the following. Uh, you, you are telling two citizens that they're, they're getting what they deserve for voting for uh, Turner. They thought Turner was, in their opinion, the best choice at that time. Let me first tell you, uh, the problem that these uh, women in these neighborhoods are having uh, go way past uh, t- Turner. It goes for every single mayor, whether it be Lanier, whether it be it be Brown, whomever. It seems like some communities simply don't get the they just don't get resource because, as as Doris said, we feel like we are the sacrificed. So what what I'm trying to get from you, brother Bardin, oh, so, is the so following. Why, why, go ahead. So why is Mayor Turner doing that to you? Why? I don't know. You tell me why. I don't know. He doesn't care. Okay, and and what I guess what I, what I'm what I'm trying to put out here is, um, and, and please tell me if I'm wrong here. Okay, um, I, 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 there are certain there's there's a thing that you said. I, be, hold a second, Barton. I need to ask for some money here, folks. Please give us a call at seven one three five two six five seven three eight to keep this program a program that's really touching us all, making a difference to keep this on air. 713-526-5738, hit extension number one to uh, to contribute, hit extension number two to be on air. And likewise, you can go to kpft.org and donate to the program. And, and uh, please select Politics Done Right as a program you are supporting. We do need your contributions. Let me Let me tell you what I... And, and, and please tell me if I'm wrong here, Barton, I, I, but, I, but this is what I'm frank in the, in the things that I talk about. Um, you mentioned uh, that nine trucks were out there trying, you know, mitigating some of the flood and I imagine you're stating, but that they were BIPOCs and they were just sitting in their cars doing nothing. Were you trying to t- give a message there at all? Please let me know. Yeah, the message is these city workers are not working. Okay. And uh, I and then specifically, why did you specify that they were BIPOCs? Well, I mean, you, I, I, I've worked with city workers. I work out in the field. I know what's going on. Uh, this is the people they hire, and they, you know, just it's the same, same. You know, uh, it's a synonym. You put them in there to work, and they're not working. And now you want to add more. You want to raise more money for more personnel or to give them raises. For what? They're just wasting fuel driving around and sitting all day on their phones. Okay. And uh, and is uh, that something that is specific? And you're, like how you're, you're reaping the rewards of what you have voted for. Okay, so and the only solution for Doris and Alice and whoever else is flooding is to move because it's not going to change. So I move to, to where? Out of your own hand, move. Okay, move neighborhood. All right, let me let, let me just say say this. Um, uh, I I really believe in solving problems, and I don't think uh I, the, the only issue I that I have I think when we talk about BIPOC communities etc is that within this entire city. Uh, you can go, you can drive from one community to the other and you can see where city services are allocated. And as Doris and, and, and Miss Alice Liu had to say, BIPOC communities are generally left behind. Um, that, that, that your statement about city workers uh, was associated with BIPOCs, I think it is probably an unfair statement, but a statement that many folks Tend to uh, tend to be predisposed to make that. I think if we we stopped that and started trying to work together to solve problems, we could. So, my dear brother, I, I am just saying, um, as opposed to putting down a uh, as as opposed to putting down a, uh, a a Doris or a Lou or or things like that. How can you work with them to make things better? And it's not about I know you're going to vote for for uh, Sheila Jackson Lee or whomever you're going to vote for. It's about 
Let's inform people so they can make an educated vote. They're not going to vote. Uh, unlike what most people believe, BIPOCs don't vote by skin color. BIPOC vote by folks they think are actually going to do something. Oh, at, yeah. No, I no, I'm, I'm just telling you. Let, uh, let, let me just give an example. Here, uh, Barden, Barden it, if, if you take a look at the stats, which I've done, okay? Uh, BIPOCs actually, I mean, let, let, let's personally, when Obama was running against hit, uh, Hillary, I, w I was a Hillary supporter before I was an Obama supporter. So uh, I just want you to know that it's a fallacy to believe that you put a, a BIPOC in there. And by the way, BIPOC folks is black, indigenous, uh, people of color, et cetera. Uh, and, 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 you know, th th there's this fallacy that uh, that that people of color only if you put a you just have to throw a person of color in there and they're going to vote for them that is not true at all okay uh, i i know it, it's a good thing that people like to assume but it isn't now the converse is often more true than not so bardin i i just want as a friend and and you call into my show you are my friend you are my brother okay i am asking all folks to Listen to themselves sometimes in, in, in the way they think sometimes and understand that this was instilled on us and we can do better. But Barden, I appreciate your call. I hope you will continue to listen and I hope you continue to call in. All right, brother? Well, one last thing. Yes, sir. That's one. It's simple. You, you, you guys want to keep voting the same way and then sit back and complain about it. Sir, who are you guys is what I'm asking you, sir. Who are you guys? Who are you guys? Doris. Doris. Doris is you guys. Doris voted for Sylvester Turner, and she will vote for Sheila Jackson Lee. Why do you say that, out. sir? How do you, first of all, how do you know that, and why do you say guarantee that? I guarantee you 100% get Doris back on the, on the line, and I guarantee you that's what will happen. Well, you know. Rodney, Sylvester, and Lena, and they are all in the bag, and they're going to take all the money, and they're going to do what they want with it. Okay, let me let me just ask you to do one thing, and before I go to Alistair, here 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 is the thing, uh, Bardin. All right, one of the things that I try to do with my program is to let people know that we have a hell of a lot more in common than not. All right, and folks like you, uh, worse folks would just throw you and say, "Ah, well, he's just a you know what." I I I think uh, understanding is yeah. important, but thank I'll you for so. Truth. You have a good one, my brother. Take care. All right, Alistair, let's go. Come on in, my dear sister. Alistair, come on in. And by the way, we lost line two. Who just called in? Please call back. Go ahead, Alistair. I'm still so, hey. Happy birthday, brother. Thank you, sis. All right. So I have got to seriously. This Barden character, what in the world does this person's color of skin have to do with them sitting on the keisters because he doesn't think they're doing their job? Why did he have to put that in there? Well, you know, um, seriously, yeah. why did he have to put that in there? It's along the same mentality of people saying this black kid was a known criminal or whatever and 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 so you know the media displays this kid that died in police custody. This is just a general example. Alistair, you know you're so right. Alistair, you're right. What I'm trying to do, however, is if you notice when I get all the inferences that a brother Burden is uh, is making. I am not going to get upset. I'm going to try to educate. I'm going to try to let, let it be known that, yeah, people want you to believe that way. When he listens to Fox or when he listens to other stations, and even when you listen to standard TV, regular TV, that is the impression that they give. This stuff, is, you know, a, a, a person doesn't get up today and become a, a prejudiced person. A person doesn't get up and just become that way. All of this stuff is institutionalized, and I, I just try to break the institution. But, uh, sis, I only have uh, three minutes left, and I have one other caller. I'm sorry to shortchange you. You know I love you, but um, um, let me jump to Melissa, and then we uh, we got to end this baby, okay? All right, Melissa, come on in. Hi, love. How are you guys doing? Good morning. Doing great. Uh, Talk to me. I was just listening. I was listening on coming in on my way to work. I got 
uh, five minutes before I have to show up to the morning meeting. But I wanted to ask, I mean, inquire, uh, he never really gave a point um, for hating on Sheila Jackson Lee and still have to turn it like that. Now, mind you, yes, there, the politics, you know, um, can't all be done by one person. It's like, uh, you know, a, a family, a, 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 a mirage of things that happen, a mirage of things that happen in black communities, right? So we can't really pinpoint one person. Yes, they're the leader, but I just wanted to tell the caller, like, he, he made me upset because I'm a Republican. I'm black. I'm a Republican. And I don't vote black. I don't, I don't vote to my color. Um, there, there are evils everywhere. You know, there's, there's a manipulation everywhere in any color. So I need him to stop. Don't, don't tell him to call in upsetting people in the, in the morning like that. Let, let, let me tell you something. First of all, thank you for calling in, Melissa. And if you notice, that's what I mentioned to him. Um, the BIPOCs are the folks that least vote color. And people don't get it. They think they can just throw a black candidate out there or a Latino candidate out there and automatically they get it. No, what happens is usually the person running against them, they don't show the symbiotic relationship necessary to win. But you take a look at statistics and you find out that no, actually... Black folks, you know, vote and, and Latinos, and I, I share all of that. I'm black, Latino, Caribbean, and all of that in one package. Uh, we vote mostly for the person. The fallacy is what they say, but I got to go, uh, Melissa, but thank you so kindly for right. calling in. Please keep Have listening, okay? Morning. Take care now, you too. <laughs> Uh, buenos dias, Roberto Luis está en, mi, está en mi página también. My brother from Panama is on the page right now as well. Thank you so kindly for calling. Uh, Howard is telling me I only have one more minute. So I ask you guys so kindly, give us a call, 713-526-5738. Hit extension number one to contribute. Please go to kpft.org. We are yet to receive a contribution. I've got to raise $250 for this hour. So we still have time. Remember, when you call in, at 713-526-5738, extension 1. When you call in, uh, say it's for politics done right. If you go to kpft.org, kpft.org, and select donate, make sure to select politics done right as the program and so that it will be appropriately attributed to this program. I wish I had more time to go into some of the stuff that Berdin had to say, because yes, he is indoctrinated with a point of view uh, of, of, of BIPOCs, people of color, etc. And, you know, uh, most, the reality is most people are. And one of the things I try to do with this show without ever raising a voice or getting pissed or anything like that is saying, let's look at things the way they really are. Uh, look, I got to get out of here. 713-526-5738, extension number one to donate. Go to kpft.org to donate. I want to remind folks to, or I want to thank Howard Reynolds and uh, and Van Van Pepper, Jack Van Pepper, Van Beaver in the, in the studio for allowing us to come on air, for making this happen every single morning at 6 a.m. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.